Okay, here we are for some popper action up against Tilt Ain't Easy. Um, slow hand with the Forgotten Cave, but we're going to go ahead and keep. Sometimes Forgotten Cave, like for instance in this hand, it's really bad to have a Forgotten Cave. Hopefully we can just draw a Mountain on turn 1. That'd be pretty nice to give us a turn 1 play. Um, burn is kind of weird because sometimes you get really pinched on mana, but you can't really play more than 19 or 20 lands because you just... Literally, you pretty much always need to cast seven spells at least to kill your opponent, so you can't really afford to flood out at all. See what we're up against here. Ooh, it looks like we might be up against uh, white red or ooh, nice. We drew a, we drew a snow covered mountain, so that'll allow us to just suspend the rift bolt. Uh, I don't know popper that well. I used to play a ton because back when I was in college and I needed to kind of grind moto and I didn't really have. Uh, <laughs> that much money or that much that much stuff online to play whatever I wanted. I bought the mono blue Delver deck back when there were dailies and they were really high value. And what I did was we're gonna rift bolt to the face and Searing Blaze is core sky fisher. This gonna be a pretty nice start to the game. I wanted to play the Thermal Alchemist, but I think this is just a little bit better. Actually no, we'll play the Searing Blaze. I was going to say I could wait to get one more damage off the Thermo, but keeping my life total high is pretty nice. And they also, he might have some sort of uh, protection spell. I don't exactly know, but looks like he's playing some sort of uh, artifact bounce values type, type strategy. Uh, we're going to play the Alchemist. Do I play the land? Because I could draw Searing Blaze. I think I do, and I just plan on cycling the cave. At this point, I might even kick the Burst Lightning, so... You need to be a little careful that if he gets another prism out, he might be able to copy the chain lightning. What what was I saying before? Anyway, at the beginning of at the beginning of uh, <laughs> my career on Magic Online, I played a ton of I played an absolute ton of Popper to to build my collection. And like it's funny because ooh, there's a Firebrand Archer. Hmm. Yeah, let's curse. Next turn, I set up for a Firebrand Archer and then Needle drop him off of the Curse Trigger. I hope I put that on him. I did. Anyway, I played. I can't focus on two things at once. I played Mono Blue, Popper, and this whole Popper Popper endeavor. I'm gonna go into my plays, but I'm playing Burn, so maybe I'll maybe I'll make it a story time, uh, more of a story time kind of thing. Uh, but I played Mono Blue Delver. Sorry for saying that a million times, but. Pretty much, I bought the deck when it was 10 or 20 tickets, and eventually it was 60 or 100 tickets because all the dazes, all the four spikes and stuff went way up in value. Looks like he's going to bounce his barons, which is a little annoying. And I just played a lot, and it was super fun, and, and a lot of people playing Popper might not have been the uh, best wizards, and it built my collection, and it really allowed me to... Um, I guess I should needle drop him now, huh? In case he's got like prismatic strands or something. It really allowed me to just build my collection and, and have fun. And I remember Stu Summers, my roommate, also bought into Mono Blue and we we just played tons of Mono Blue dailies and did really well. So uh, just just lots of fun in Popper. And it's funny because they printed a lot of cards and Popper's a lot different. Back then it was just all Delver decks and Storm decks. And now they're just so many different decks. It's kind of crazy to think about. Looks like he's going to kill my guy. I've actually seen this list before. Pretty cool deck. I don't know exactly. Do they play, like, Battle Screech? I don't really know how deep he's going. But, um... Looks like he doesn't really have that fast of a clock on me. So I'm pretty comfortable we'll be able to win win this, this one. Nice. That's lethal, right? Yeah. And you can kind of see why Archer is great, because while it demands removal, and this is exactly what I meant with Burst Lightning, sometimes you want just want another cheap cheap Lava Spike kind of spell. Nice, and we burned him. Alright, so he's got Basilica. I wonder if I want Molten Rain. I mean, he's got Clues and stuff. Smash might be good. Don't think Martyr of Ashes is that good. Uh, he has at least some Flyers. That we know about. So what cards are bad against him? I think Curse of the Pierced Heart might be a bit bad. But he is really slow. And he's trying to go for value. I basically 
almost always cut Lava Spike against creature decks as my first cut, especially when I'm boarding like Martyr and going Control because they they counteract each other a little bit. Um, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut some Lava Spikes. I'm not sure if Stagger Shock is actually good either. I like to imagine that Molten Rain's probably better on the play. And the thing about this is it costs a lot of mana and doesn't deal that much damage. So don't be tricked by, like... Just because he's playing Boris Al Basilica doesn't mean I, I want to side this in. I'm not really that familiar with his list, but I imagine that smashing something is pretty nice because he's going to try to, like, pick up his prisms and whatnot. So maybe we'll board in two smash. And take out a Curse of the Pierced Heart. Another thing I like about Smash is that can maybe provide some disruption if he's boarding in cards like uh, like hate cards, like Lone Missionary and stuff. You need to be able to do a lot of damage to them. So maybe because of that, I want to leave him a curse. I, I really don't know what my opponent's up to, honestly. Let's leave one Stagger Shock in. Basically didn't do any sideboarding. We put in two Smash Smithereens and took out two Lava Spikes. Uh, just for the ability to disrupt a little bit. And look, we have one instead of a Lava Spike, so hopefully that, that works out for us. Uh, no creature, but he's on six. Uh, it's going to come down to, if he draws hate, if he doesn't draw hate cards, I'm just going to pretty much kill him every time. I imagine that he's got a pretty bad matchup. Oh, he's got Vault of the Whispers. That's right, that's why I wanted the Smash. I knew he had some artifacts that, that I missed out on. But yeah, just blow up a land, deal you three is pretty insane. Okay, we drew a Thermo. That's perfect. And one of the things that Burn does really well in in this format is it reminds me of, like, bo uh, Boggles, kind of, in, in Modern, where I don't have that many creatures. Like, I only have the Alchemists and the Firebrand Archers. But they basically need to be killed on sight. So your opponent has to leave in removal, but how much removal do they leave in? If they leave in too much, they end up with dead cards in their hand, and if they leave up if they leave too little, they can't reliably kill your Alchemist. So really hoping we get to untap with Alchemist here. An Ancient Den. I should board in all my smashes. Chainer's Edict, sure. That's fine. Opponent's still at 20. Could be a struggle, but we do have 10 points of burn in our hand right now. Not under any pressure, so let's see if we can what we can draw here. Forgotten Cave. Just going to snap cycle that. And there's a smash, so actually I'm just going to smash his land. Loving that. Ooh. It's like a lava spike that also deals them three. I can't believe I didn't side all of them in. I remember seeing Vault of the Whispers, but like I said, I'm kind of taking it a little casual because it's because it's modern and I should, uh, should pay a little bit more attention. There's a Fire Blast. Um, so do I want to just... I kind of want to get this Needle Drop off. To try to find a creature to deal consistent damage, or, or a, uh, what's it, what's the word, a thermo or firebrand, so I can start to go off. So I don't mind cycling the, the needle drop. Hopefully he's got a lot of reactive cards. Uh, right now I've got ten points of burn, so I'm actually, you know, if he plays a creature, I can just kill him. If I draw a land, that is, or if I draw a three damage spell, I also have lethal that costs one. That's not a rift bolt. But I did set out two Lava Spikes, so I don't know how likely that is. That's what's kind of insane about the Burn deck is just... Like, I'm playing with people that are only playing with commons, but this could almost be like a modern Burn deck. This deck wouldn't be that bad in modern. I think it probably wouldn't would be pretty bad, but wouldn't be that terrible. Another Searing Blaze. Uh, something that happens a lot in this deck is you play a fourth land and you Searing Blaze twice. You just can't reliably Searing Blaze things. Last turn. I still don't really know what he like. What is his end game with all this bouncing? Is there some? Does he have metalcraft things? Like maybe he's got uh, like Oriok Sun Chaser and stuff like that. So I think here I actually want to lightning bolt him because I I might be pinched on mana. What I probably should have done was chain lightning him this turn. Wasn't really thinking about it, but 
Okay, so we just go for the win. Chain Lightning and Fire Blast. Boom. So easy. Fire Blast is really broken. But our opponent just put no pressure on us. Like, Duress is not really that good if you just don't have a creature already in play. I think Duress is one of the most overrated cards in Magic history. Boom. Uh, suck on that. Uh, digest that for a second. And I'll see you guys for the next round.